This is Sharon Beck, Brandman University, in week four, doing a video on thinking about leadership. This week we talked a lot, or the readings were a lot, about conflict and about just, you know, if you're going to do management, you probably are going to have to deal with some people that are having some fairly significant conflict. I think when I imagine myself trying to mediate conflict, that, boy, does that seems to be really a difficult thing to do. I think my whole life I've been kind of a conflict avoidant person, although I suspect in the last five or six years that's changing. Uh, certainly sitting in an office doing outpatient therapy, there really isn't a whole lot of conflict, and though my group psychotherapy practice involves excuse me, a number of other people, uh, we kind of each do our own thing and have our own clients and really there's not a huge amount of conflict in our practice. The head of our practice is a man, is a psychiatrist who is um, also pretty conflict avoidant. He and I are great friends because certainly we never fight, um, but I guess, you know, that can only happen when you're really not that connected to each other and I think the people in our group are probably more disengaged than they are enmeshed, so we don't have a lot of conflict there to mediate. Now, at the hospital, it is a whole different story. Um, we're kind of in each other's back pockets all the time, and the staff uh, get along pretty well. There's not too much conflict amongst us. There's huge amounts of difficulty with management right now. Hopefully, we'll, we will be able to get that worked out because they just will not give us enough staff to function adequately. And I certainly understand in this era of changing health care, we are going to have to uh, understand that we will do with less staff. But it seems like the only method that they know right now is to say, is to not really look for innovative solutions in the staffing issues, but to say, well, okay, we're going to have more patients, so we're just going to have to do the same amount of work, but with um, the same, you know, more work with less staff, which seems to me like it's really not going to work very well. We had a completed suicide last week for a patient that had left our day program. Um, I did not know this patient, but I felt so, so bad for the young therapist who's been out of school all of a year who had to try to manage her feelings. I spent about an hour with her just, just trying to listen and be there for her because I don't think there's anything that's very easy when a suicide is completed after a person walks out of the day program at night and you know that you were the last person that saw them in a therapeutic sense alive. So, plenty of conflict management issues going on. Uh, I guess the other thing that we worked on this week that was kind of an interesting, interesting thing to think about was Sharmer's article on Theory U and presencing. Um, I found that really fascinating. I think that there is a real gift to be able to sense what's ahead and to be able to listen in such a deep way that it's more, it's certainly more than downloading and it's even more than empathy. It's that sense that you're really um, out there in a whole different space listening to another person um, or another group of people or sensing what's ahead. And I think I've had a tiny bit of that experience. My first husband used to call me Fiverr from Watership Down, the movie, the rabbit that just could just kind of sense what was coming. Um, often, you know, I don't know, I think it's just sort of a gift to be able to feel pieces come together and know a little bit of, a little bit of what might be ahead. Boy, I surely don't think we know right now in healthcare what's ahead, though. I don't care who you are. Uh, and how good you are at presencing, it's really tricky to understand how all of this is going to play out when it's all finished. So those are a couple of things that we were thinking about this week that I've been kind of looking at. Um, it is coming along in this course now. Conflict management was the issue, and I hope that I really don't have to be in a position where I do a lot of conflict mediation, but I, I could see where it's probably a much better idea for the person that's the manager to get involved and try to understand and sort out conflicts between the staff. I found one concept that intrigued me was that of the idea that a person that is um, if a manager has constant conflict, 
that it probably has something to do with them, that they really need to look at how they're managing, and that managers need to spend 90% of their time um, dealing with issues with people. I guess I don't know too many managers really that I think that have done that. They seem to spend time in endless meetings trying to plan things, but it seems like in terms of understanding what's happening with troops on the ground right now, I have not experienced that. Though I have some, had some incredibly excellent managers over the years who were just wonderful, um, interesting people and who really did try to make life easier for the staff. I think that's about it for tonight. Thank you. Goodbye.